الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله الملك الحق المبين وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله الصادق الوعد الأمين صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام وشر الأمور محدثتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وما قل ودل خير مما كثر وألها وقليل يغنيك خير من كثير يطغيك وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين وبعد Dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam Today, inshallah ta'ala, we are going to discuss uh, one of the ayat that help in, uh, help in maintaining uh, stability in uh, societies. We have a lot of ayat in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and many ahadith that speak about the relation uh, between the, uh, the rulers and uh, uh, the common people. And this is one of these ayat that we're going to talk about today to try uh, together to maintain stability uh, in, our, in our community. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse uh, 59 in Surah An-Nisa uh, chapter 4 uh, Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu ati'u allaha wa ati'u al-rasoola wa uli al-amri minkum fa inta naza'atum fi shay'in farudduhu ila allahi wa al-rasool in kuntum tu'minuna billahi wal yawm al-akhir thalika khayru wa ahsanu ta'wila So I'm going to, uh, as usual, I'm just going to give a very rough translation and then after that I'm going to go into uh, some explanation of this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically saying, uh, all believers obey Allah and obey His messengers and people who are in charge amongst you. And if you have any dispute uh, or any different opinions, go back to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by uh, consulting the scholars who can analyze the Quran and the Sunnah, if you truly believe in Allah in the last day. And doing that is going to lead to a, a better destination for you and their ta'wil, their interpretation of the Quran and Sunnah is going to be better than our own uh, ta'wil, our own interpretation for our, our own selves. That's a very rough translation as you can tell. So I would like to start with a story that's narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim on how should we obey um, uh, people who are in charge, uh, awliya al-umur, and who are uh, awliya al-umur in this ayah. Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, sent a group of his sahaba uh, to another city. They were a sariyah, a group of sahaba traveling together, and they had uh, an emir. And you know from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if only three people even are traveling together, they need to have a leader. We call him in our Islamic tradition an Amir. Nowadays he can be a leader. Um, so he, that leader, the Amir, he was from the Ansar. And at some points in his like, tour with the group of Sahaba, he got uh, mad at them. Maybe because they did not obey him in some of his instructions. The narration actually does not mention why he was mad at them. So he told them, didn't Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam command you to obey whatever I'm saying, whatever I say? Uh, they said, yes, we're supposed to obey you. He said, فَجْمَعُوا حَطَبًا وَأَوْكِدُوا نَارًا So now, uh, set a fire. And I don't want to just to be a, a campfire, I want it to be huge. It needs to be huge fire. And then they did that out of obedience. Then he said, then now go jump into the fire because he was so mad to that, uh, to that extent. Go jump into the fire. You know, some people, they would even follow that blindly. Follow the Amir, they follow the Amir, whatever he says. Actually, in fact, some of the Sahaba, Rudwanullahi alayhim, hamma ba'aduhum bi fi'li dhalik. Some of them, they were going to throw them, themselves into the fire. فَقَامَ شَابٌ مِّنْهُمْ A young man stood up. And he said, you know what, that actually doesn't make sense to me. Because we followed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the first place to flee from the hellfire. And now our Amir is asking us to jump into the fire. So uh, why don't you just wait for a little bit of time until we go back to Medina and we consult the Nabi alayhi himself. 
When they went back and told Rasulullah the story, he said, لَوْ دَخَلْتُمُوهَا مَا خَرَجْتُمْ مِنْهَا أَبَدًا إِنَّمَا الطَّاعَةُ فِي الْمَعْرُوفِ He said, if you were to jump into the fire, as your Amir told you out of obedience, you would never be able to come out of it until the day of Qiyamah. And then he said, obedience towards awliya al-umur, people who are in charge, is only required when it's ma'roof. Ma'roof means uh, whatever is approved by the book of Allah or the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or unanimously agreed on among the scholars. Now, I need to say something very important that I'm, ta I'm not talking now about any political situation in any country. So if you're trying to, if you're now thinking about some political situations in some certain countries, I'm not talking about them. I'm only talking about this ayah in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, ayah number 59. Don't try to twist the ayat in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fit into your situation. I'm not doing this right now. I'm only talking about... Uh, this ayah right now. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and how Rasulullah and the Sahaba implemented that instruction in the Quran. طيب. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah he said, أطيعوا الله. Uh, obey Allah. أطيع uh, means obey. And then when he talked about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he repeated the word أطيعوا another time. And that means, as the scholars of tafsir say, obeying Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has to be independently. Meaning, if I find a hadith in the sunnah of Rasulullah, a sound, authentic hadith in the sunnah of Rasulullah, that has some rulings, I need as a Muslim to implement those rulings, even if I don't find any supportive ayah from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked us to follow Rasulullah independently. أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ And then, وَأَطِيعُ Rasul. He has وَأَطِيعُ by himself. But when he talked about أُولُو الْأَمْرُ People who are in charge, he did not say, وَأَطِيعُوا أُولِي الْأَمْرِ He did not say, أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولَ وَأَطِيعُوا أُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ There is no وَأَطِيعُوا when he talked about أُولِي الْأَمْرِ Because obeying people who are in charge, أُولِي الْأَمْرِ is only required when they obey Allah and His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم But obeying Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم does it require any support from the Qur'an? By himself, he needs to be obeyed, alayhi salatu wasalam. In fact, one of the signs of the last day, that some people would say, only Qur'an is sufficient for us. The sunnah of Rasulullah is not that important. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as an Imam uh, uh, Abu Dawood narrated, he said, لا ألفينا أحدكم أو لا ألفينا أحدكم لا ألفينا أحدكم متكئا على أريكته يأتيه الأمر من أمري أو النهي من نهي فيقول لا نعلمه أو لا نعلم ذلك علينا بكتاب الله. He said one of the signs of the last the signs of the last day that some people will be sitting down in their comfortable chairs lying down in their comfortable sofas, talking about religion, and when some uh, rulings from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reached them, they would say, sunnah is not sufficient in its own uh, for me. It's not sufficient in its own. I need an ayah from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to support that. That is one of the signs of the last day. Rasulullah talked about this alayhi salatu wa salam. In fact, Allah said, مَنْ يُطِعِ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ just the fact that I follow a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have already followed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May yuti rasul whoever obeys the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has in fact obeyed Allah himself subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, the first part of the ayah, obeying Allah is independent, and obeying Rasulullah is independent, independent, but obeying people who are in charge, any other human being after Rasulullah, obeying him is not independent. It has to come from the book of Allah with the approval or from the sunnah of Rasulullah with its approval. Tayyib. Now, who are Ulul Amr? We have two opinions among the scholars are so limited and then we have a very wide concept of Ulul Amr that I'm going to mention inshallah after that. <laughs> the first opinion among the scholars of Ulul Amr are Al Hakim Al Adil. Al Hakim Al Adil. Just uh, just rulers, like al Khulafa al Rashidun, the, the rightly guided caliphs of Rasulullah who came after the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We need to obey those people, our leaders. 
And in fact, um, uh, the Al Khulafa al Rashidun, at the beginning of their uh, Khilafah, they always to say that to people, Ati'uni ma ata'tu Allah fikum. Obey me so long as I obey Allah regarding your affairs. فَإِنْ عَصَيْتُ اللَّهَ فَلَا طَاعَةَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ But if I disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try to implement something that contradicts the book of Allah and the Sunnah of Rasulullah on you, you don't have to obey me. You're not required to obey me anymore. Maslam ibn Abdul Malik radiallahu anhu one time he was given a khutbah and he said to his people, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِسْمَعُوا وَأَطِيعُوا A man by the, by the kunya of Abu Hazim, he stood up and said, why do we have to listen and obey? He said, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to, do, to obey your leaders, as he mentioned in the Quran, chapter 4, verse 59, he said, أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولُ وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Obey people who are in charge amongst you. Then he said to him, لَكِنَّهُ نَزَعَهَا مِنْكُمْ Abu Hazim said to Maslad Amak, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken that right away from you in the same exact ayah when he said, فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ It's been taken away from you. If you have any dispute, if you have any disagreement, you're not supposed to go still follow your rulers unless you go back to the scholars who can analyze the book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah and now... You can solve your problems and agree on something, and then we can obey you. Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu anhu, we know him, a just ruler, one, the second Khalifa of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Amir al Mu'mineen. <laughs> Sayyidina Umar was uh, strong, like mentally, emotionally, and physically. Sayyidina Umar was tall, He's a, he was a very strong man, physically, and he was tall. Yani, either waqaf al Sahaba. <laughs> إذا اجتمع الصحابة برز حمزة وعمر. If you see a group of صحابة standing up together, سيدنا عمر and سيدنا حمزة will be the tallest. You would see them first, very tall. رضي الله عنه. سيدنا عمر رضي الله عنه when he would ride a horse, his his feet would touch the ground. That's how tall he was. If people see him walking behind the ceiling, I mean behind a fence. If if people see him walking behind the fence, a sour uh, uh, they would think he is riding a horse. Because he was very tall, radiallahu anhu. So one time he collected some of al-fay. Al-fay is actually the, the spoils of the wars. You know, after one of the battles, Muslims, they collected the spoils of the wars. And they're supposed, as Amir al-Mu'min said, Umar, to distribute everything among uh, people uh, equally. So uh, uh, he gave everyone a piece of cloth to use it in whichever way you like. So next Friday, people came to Jum'ah, everybody, almost everyone was wearing the same thobe from the same piece of cloth that Sayyidina Umar gave them. And Sayyidina Umar himself, the Imam, was also wearing the same uh, thobe from the cloth he gave to people. So he took some for himself. And then he started his khutbah. أَمَّا بَعْدُ أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِسْمَعُوا وَأَطِعُوا Oh people, listen and obey. Sayyidina Salman al-Farisi, رضي الله عنه, stood up. And said, لا سمع ولا طاعة. Amir al-Mu'mineen, we're not going to listen. We're not going to obey. Sayyidina Umar, know that Sayyidina Salman is one of the religious people in the community. Why would you say that? <laughs> said to him, why? Sayyidina Salman said, he expressed his concern. He said, you're wearing a thawb that's apparently, obviously, much longer than what we're wearing because you're a tall person. And this means you have taken a longer piece of cloth to yourself and they get, you gave us smaller pieces of clothes. Look at that. Like one of the shaab, one of the common people is arguing with Amir al muminin the ruler, because of the piece of cloth. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu did not say anything. His son Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar was sitting down. Said to him, stand up, ya Abdullah, takallam. Speak up, stand up and explain what happened. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar said to them, Ayyuha nas inna abi rajulun tawil. Oh people, my father, as you know, is a tall man. I know the piece of cloth wouldn't be enough for him, so I give him my own piece of cloth, so he would do, make one uh, uh, thaw for himself, and he's going to buy me something else later on. I'm fine. And now Sayyidina, at that moment, Sayyidina Salman al-Farisi said, Al-an. At that moment, just right now, نَسْمَعُ وَنُطِيعُ 
after you explained everything, now we listen and we, <laughs> and we obey. That's how people used to implement this ayah. Following people who are in charge is not blindly. And also saying my opinion to people who are in charge, we should be very careful how we say our opinion or how we express our thoughts and our concerns so we do not destroy our countries, we do not destroy our communities. It's a very complicated topic actually. If you hear someone talking about this topic here, it's different from someone else in Egypt, different from someone else in Pakistan, totally different from someone else in Saudi Arabia. Very complicated topic. And that's why I said at the beginning of the khutbah, please don't twist my words. I'm only talking about the ayah. I'm not talking about any political situation. It's complicated. I'm only talking about the book of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. How to implement it? It's the job of the scholars who live in that certain area. They are going to tell you what to do. They are going to tell you what to do. They, uh, they, adra bi, bi, bi yani. they know their problems and their concerns more than anybody else outside of their communities. أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولَ وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Now, in the state of uh, uh, disagreement, if we disagree, what should we do? فَإِنْ تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ The second opinion, who are أُولُو الْأَمْرِ First opinion are the just rulers. Second opinion, they are, as Sayyid ibn Abbas said, أَهْلُ الْفِقْهُ وَالدِّينَ The scholars of fiqh and religion. Who religious scholars of fiqh. Those are the people to be obeyed. It means, if you have any disagreement between you and your rulers, you should go back to the scholars who are qualified and religious to tell you and your rulers what to do. That's not exactly the case in a lot of places. The scholars don't have that authority anyways, but that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to do. Because those people are going to go back to his book and the sunnah of his messenger وسلم, and they have the tools to analyze it and tell everybody what we're supposed to do in that situation and then Allah said in kuntum tu'minuna billahi wa akhir you know what that's if you still believe in Allah in the last day <laughs> if you still do that you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that we believe in him and in the last day but he wants to encourage us by, by saying if you still believe it's like you're saying to your child, if you want to pass your exams, you need to study well. Of course, he wants to, 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 to pass his exam. He doesn't want to fail, right? He wants to go to next grade. That's what he wants. Allah knows we want to obey him. Allah knows we believe in him and in the last day. But he's encouraging us. If you still believe, truly believe, do this. Go back to the scholars, ask their opinions for you and your rulers to follow. فَإِنْ تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرَدُونَ اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِلَوَلَ مِنْ آخِرِ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا That actually is always better for you أَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا تَأْوِيلًا here has two meanings تَأْوِيلًا comes from the word مَآل مَا تَأُولُ إِلَيْهِ الْأُمُورِ Meaning This is going to lead to a better destination If you do that and you try to implement this methodology, the destination is going to be better than not doing it. Ta'wila. You're going to succeed as a community at the end. The second meaning, the word ta'wila, comes from ta'wil al-Quran. Ta'wil is a little bit different from tafsir. Tafsir is a rough translation or explanation briefly, but ta'wil is to go in depth in the book of Allah, in the Sunnah of Rasulullah, and explain something. That's ta'wil. So Allah is saying, أَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا The ta'wil, the interpretation of the scholars is always better for us than our own interpretation of the book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروا من كل ذنب إنه لفظ الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مولانا رسول الله وآله وصحبه من ولاه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم. نعم إن شاء الله تعالى I'm going to mention one last point regarding this uh, important ayah and how to keep stability in our communities, uh, the relationship between us and our uh, rulers, people who are in charge. By the way, the ayah before this one 
ayah number 59, Allah is talking about justice. He said, إِنَّ اللَّهِ أَمُرَكُمْ أَن تُؤَدُّ الْأَمَانَاتِ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا وَإِذَا حَكَمْتُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ أَن تَحْكُمُوا بِالْعَدْلِ He's talking now to the rulers, not to us, common people. <laughs> so first he talked about the responsibilities of the rulers and our rights on them. And then he talked to us about their respons uh, our responsibilities towards them and their rights on us. There's, there's this balance in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the ayat after this are all talking about, for like four or five ayat, talking about obedience to Allah and His Messenger. It's like still you don't follow them unless they follow Allah and His Prophet. That's how we put the ayat in context to be able to understand the whole idea. Last point that I would like to mention here is when the scholars talked about Masadir uh, Masadir al Tashri'a. When we study Usul al Fiqh, foundations of Fiqh, there are Masadir, some resources that we go back to take the rulings of Islam from. They said in this ayah, four of them are mentioned. In this one ayah, four of them are mentioned. Quickly, what are these four? Quran, Sunnah, Ijma'a, Qiyas. Ijma' is whatever is unanimously agreed on among the scholars. If there is something that's unanimously agreed on among the scholars, I can use it as an ayah or as a hadith of Rasulullah. Same thing, qiyas is analogy, and that's the job of the qualified scholars to do. To go back to the book of Allah and use analogy to extract rulings. Quran and Sunnah are mentioned in this ayah, أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولِ And Al-Ijma' is mentioned in وَأُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ And then the fourth one, Al-Qiyas analogy is mentioned in فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ Go back to the book of Allah and use analogy. Book of Allah and the Sunnah of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Of course, we have some other resources in Usul al-Fiqh that we study at Al-Azhar al-Sharif and some other institutes that, uh, that teach Islamic studies. Like for example, Istishab عند الشافعية, for example, or Istihsan عند سيدنا أبو حنيفة والمصلحة المرسلة وعمل أهل المدينة عند الإمام مالك and some other uh, uh, مصادر التشريع, some other resources of legislation in this religion. It's a, bit, it's a story, long story, we're not going into it, of course, but I just wanted to mention in this ayah, four of the resources of Sharia are mentioned. جزاكم الله خيرا وأقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه من كل ذنب إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. اللهم لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا مرحومة وتفرقنا من بعده معصومة ولا تجعل فينا ولا بيننا شقية ولا محرومة اللهم علمنا ما جهلنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا وإلى غيرك لا تكلنا ومن شرور خلقك سلمنا اللهم علمنا ما جهلنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا يا ربنا علما ومن شرور خلقك سلمنا آمين 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 وصل لهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقم الصلاة <تصفيق>